Can we build it? You bet your butt we can. Welcome back, everybody. Profiteer is going on. Lost Profit here. Part 2 of the Applied Energistics Automation Tutorial. We got our ME network set up here. We got our pattern assembly. We got our basic brain here. We got storage. But first, before we get into automation, we are going to get into wireless. Yes, we are going to make this thing wireless. Okay, so the first part is the wireless receiver. Okay, the wireless receiver is three iron, some quartz fiber in the middle, and an ender pearl on top. That's your basic component that you're going to need to make this bad boy here. This is the wireless access point or wireless hotspot. It's three glass, four iron, one bit of ME cable, and the wireless receiver. It gives you that bad boy right there. We're going to go ahead and take that out. Then, if you want to boost it, because your signal is only going to go 16 blocks with the default, you're going to want to make some boosters. Boosters are simple, just two iron, one crystal, and one redstone, and that will give you the wireless booster. Now, they stack up to 64, but you can only put 16 of them in any given wireless hotspot. And to access it wirelessly, the very simple ME access terminal and wireless receiver gives you the ME wireless access terminal or the wireless remote. Now, just in case you've forgotten how to make an access terminal, there it is. Okay, two iron on the top and the bottom, ME cable, conversion matrix in the middle, glass up the front, ME access terminal. Okay, now before you can use this wireless access terminal, see, no signal, no signal, no signal, you need to go ahead and put it in this little slot over here. That's what this is for. You drop that in there and it says you're linked. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop our access point right there. And then we are going to put the boosters inside of it. That will juice it up to 32 blocks. And it should give us the ability to work with the within the entire pyramid here. All right. So that's making your system wireless. Now, if you look, I've added the hotspot. Boom. I can access the terminal. And you can see I've filled it up with all kinds of goodies. Today, we are doing automation. So we need ME cable. We need lots of it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to do the furnaces here. Okay, usually this is how I set it up. We do the imp or the export bus on the top and the import bus on the side. Because if you look in the furnace, top, side. That just helps you remember how it goes. We're going to link those two up with a, that. And then we're going to do uh, something a little different here. We're going to put an ME interface on top of that one because we're going to show you something different. Same thing with the macerator, only we're going to do it different here because of where it's sitting. We're going to do export bus on top import bus on that side we're gonna link them up boom like that and then uh, we got this other macerator here we're gonna put another interface right there and then we're gonna have the export import bus coming off the side there we go alright <clears throat> so we got the basic setup right there we're gonna go ahead and skip the extractor for right now so you notice here everything is set up now let's say we wanna do some basic cooking alright so uh, we got we got a bunch of iron ore in the system here. There's the iron ore, just one. Now, if we go ahead and we come over here to the import the export bus on top of the macerator, and we put our iron ore right there, tell it to go into stack mode. It can move either single items or stacks of items. There you go. What it'll do is it will automatically macerate the uh, the iron ore and send it back into the system as iron dust. There it is. Boom. Isn't that nice? All right, now we've got some gold ore here too. We're going to take that, pop that in there. Boom. Stack mode is already available. And then we're going to put the gold ore back in the system. Boom. Dust. All right, so we got gold dust and we got iron dust. Now we're going to take one of those each, so you shift and left click on, or shift and right click on them, and it'll let you pull one out at a time. We're going to go over here to our electric furnace. We're going to tell it to grab iron dust. Oop, now we're going to tell it to grab gold dust. There we go. That should work. Oh no, that's the import bus. I got these backwards. Blah de hell. All right, so we got to do that and that. Now the import bus needs to go on the side, and the export bus needs to go on the top. Silly me. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the iron dust in there and the gold dust in there. And you see the furnace fired right up, 
and spat us out some ingots. All right, so we have 65 of those and 121 of those. That's good. So here, watch. We'll throw our dust in there. It'll automatically pull it out, smelt it, and spit it back out as ingots. There we go. Nice. Now there's another way we can do this. And that's with the ME interface. Now you see it has export config, exported items, and processing. We're going to concern ourselves with processing. So here we go. First things first. We are going to go into the ME network. And we are going to grab ourselves some, what, what, what can we auto smelt in here? What can we do that makes it do that? Well, you know what? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, you know what? We'll do that with the macerator. So you see we have this on top of the macerator right here? Processing. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull out a lump of coal and macerate it into coal dust. Boom. Coal dust goes into the system. There's our coal dust. So we're going to pull that out. We're going to grab another lump of coal, and we're going to grab a pattern blank. Here's what the ME interface can let you do. I'm going to move my pattern encoder over here. Now, you put this here, and then you can force it to a certain result if you put that result in this box here. So, you see we get coal. can make coal dust. We import it onto that pattern, and then we go over to the macerator, and we put this right there there now if a recipe calls for coal dust it will look out onto the network find the coal dust recipe right here pull out the coal that's necessary macerate it and send it back into the system sweet sweet and you can do this for your extractors your compressors your furnaces any of your IC2 machines you can do it like that now we're gonna get around here I need my cable where is my cable I moved my cable there is my cable we're going to get around here. We're going to go this way with it. You know what? I'm going to go up and over because uh, I don't feel like, you know, having to break stuff all the time. So we're going to go up and over, and we are going to go over this way to our whoop, thermal expansion machines. Doot, 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 doot. There we go. Ah, da, da. Now, thermal expansion is kind of nifty because uh, you notice they have the colored inputs for the automation. We're going to start here with the powered furnace. So we're going to put the export bus on top on the blue slot, which if you configured it in here is your input. And then your output needs to be gray. I find that it colored outputs just do not work. But the regular gray outputs do work. So we hook that up, and there's how you can automate a powered furnace. Anything that can go in a powered furnace, you can put in there and pull out of there. Here's a nifty one. This is the induction smelter. And this one has two inputs green and purple. Now for some reason the export buses work with the colors but not the import buses. So if you have two things in there you can smelt that. We're gonna go ahead and actually we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Stack mode. Stack mode. Alright we're gonna set that up in a little bit but first we're gonna go over here to the pulverizer and we're gonna set up the... Oh, no, we just wanna come off the network like that. There we go. So we got our export bus going right there, our import bus going right there, we'll link them up, and then if I get into my inventory here, you'll see that I have some silver ore and some lead ore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the silver ore in there first because I want some silver pulverized, and then we'll put the lead in there second. Now you can see, whoop, drop the lead, it's already started pulverizing the, the silver into pulverized silver. So then what we can do is either the powered furnace or the electric furnace, doesn't matter. We can go ahead and send that into there. Boom. Put it in stack mode. And it will automatically start smelting our silver into ingots. Very cool. Now, I'm going to throw that back in there. That lead in there too. And now that we have silver ingots, we can show you what we can do with the induction smelter. Okay, so you know how to make electrum, right? Electrum is gold smelted with silver. So we are going to put silver right there in that input. Notice the silver is going in there. And then this input, we're going to put the gold. Boom. And it starts pumping out electrum, two by two. And the electrum, of course, gets pulled right back out and into the system. 
Very nice. All right. So now we're going to get a little tricky here. We are going to use the magma crucibles and the liquid transposers, and we are going to set up a system to auto craft some tesseracts and some redstone energy cells. Be right back. All right, back here at the brains of our little ME operation. We're going to show you how to automate the process of a redstone energy cell two different ways. There's the two-step way, and then there's the one-step way. So first, we need to encode a pattern for each piece of the redstone energy cell. First of all, we need the redstone conductance coil, which is just two redstone and an electromagnet in there. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. We're going to clean that out, and then we need to make the energy cell frame. Four hardened glass, four electrum, and a diamond. There it is. That is the empty energy cell frame. Encode. All right. So we actually need to encode two of those. Boom. We're going to do that there and that there. And then we're going to put that in there and that in there. And we are going to hold on to this one. So actually, no, wait. We don't want to hold on to that one. We want to take that one out. That, that was a goof on my part. <laughs> All right. Now that we have our empty energy cell frame taken care of, we are going to go ahead and start the process here of making a redstone energy cell. Now, we got the crafting recipe for the empty frame right here. We're going to switch over to crafting so it doesn't jump on us because it's still making stuff. We're going to go ahead and begin. And that should give us one empty redstone energy cell. I know I got this stuff in there. Why are you not giving it to me? Ah, because I'm in crafting. There we are. Okay, we've got one empty energy cell. Now what we can do, is we can come over here, and we can drop this into the export bus. This is the two-step way. Okay, so now the export bus, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> we want to put that in the export bus right above the liquid transposer. There it is. I'm moving into stack mode just in case. All right, now what we can do is we can go ahead and we'll cook another one up. Go into crafting here, cook another one up, begin, and we're gonna switch it over to stored items. And eventually, you'll see a full redstone energy cell frame come out. Where is it at? Where are you at, dog? Where are you at, dog? It's in the liquid transposer right now. You can see it lit up down here. And it's going to spit us out a full redstone energy cell frame when it is done. Give it a moment here. Take a break. Make a sandwich. You know, do, do what it is you do. And there we go. It should pull it out and put it in the network now. Oh, no, it doesn't want to. I have to make that gray. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out right now. Yeah, That is the gray side. Oh, I don't have the export set. There we go. That's right. Do I have it set here? No, I need that to be gray. There we go. Just making sure. I forgot to set those to gray. So now that we have our full redstone energy cell frame, we can go ahead and go over here and craft up and encode our redstone energy cell. We need three electrum ingots. We need two lead here. And you know what? I didn't bother to make. I didn't bother to make the conductance coil. That was silly of me. So we're going to go ahead and make one of those. Blink it over to here. Grab that. All right. So we got the conductance coil. Silly me, right? Silly me. I'm human. All right. So now we can make with our lead ingots and our electrum ingots. An empty redstone energy cell that will get charged up so we can go ahead and encode that and we can throw that in our pattern encoder and now what it'll do is it'll create a two-step process by which we throw in the empty frame it goes out to the liquid transposer and gets filled up like so okay Once that gets filled up, it'll go back into the network, and we can go ahead and two-step craft this whole thing. Or what we can do is we can automate this incredibly. So we send that into the liquid transposer like so. All 
Okay, it's out. And we can go ahead with that and craft ourselves a redstone energy cell. Like that. Give it a moment. And we have an empty redstone, or a full redstone energy cell. Actually, it's an empty one, and our power's dead, so we need the time set day, because we're running on solar. There we go. Now, I think we can automate this. It's not a two-step process if you do it this way. So what we need to do is we need to make an empty frame and not have it get sucked into the network. So we're going to do that real quick. We are going to disable it getting sucked into the network like so. And then we are going to go ahead and make an empty frame. Begin. And then actually we're going to make two of them. We need two of them here. So we're going to make another one. All right, there we go. And we are going to take one of those. And we are going to come over to our pattern encoder. We're going to come over here. Drop our blank pattern in there. Now you see this. That's the empty redstone energy cell. And there's the forced output. The redstone energy cell full. We are going to encode that on the pattern blank. And take it over here to our ME interface. Pop it in right here. Boom. There. Now whenever a redstone energy cell wants to be created. Instead of going through the two step process. Now it will realize that that liquid transposer is used to fill up the redstone energy cell frame. So we're going to go ahead and empty these out. Make sure the frame's not there. Put that right there so it needs to be crafted. All right. So we're going to go to crafting, redstone energy cell, and we are going to make one. Okay, so it'll make that, send that out to the liquid transposer, which is there. Okay. And then we're going to watch as we should get two redstone energy cells now. Give it a moment. Let the... Uh, let the energy cell frame fill up and then it will complete the process there it is boom we have two of them now ha ha simple automation with me lovely this is why this is my new favorite mod so yeah if you enjoyed this little tutorial and found it helpful please give it a like please subscribe i got plenty more there's plenty more tutorials at the uh, end of this uh, video here i got a link to it and uh... yeah if you want to come and play on Roguecraft, where I build all this crazy stuff, there's also a link down in the description there. So uh, stay safe, play hard, and automate everything using Applied Energistics. Don't forget to set it today if you're solar powered. Alright, see you guys later.